All right, Salim Razaya here, and I'm back with another Walking the Line from Research to Practice. And this is a bit of an older paper, but probably one worth going through. It's called the HALT-IT trial, which is looking at tranexamic acid for GI bleeds. Now, in my opinion, this is the definitive study on this topic. There have been lots of trials looking at tranexamic acid for a lot of other medical conditions, but this trial changed my practice in terms of giving tranexamic acid for patients with gastrointestinal hemorrhage. So a little bit about the study. This was a randomized clinical trial with over 12,000 patients. So very large trial, definitely randomized, all the things we like to hear. It was 164 hospitals from 15 countries. So this is in a lot of different medical systems, a lot of different patients, which really increases the generalizability of the results. Patients got randomized to either one gram over 10 minutes of tranexamic acid plus another three grams over 24 hours. We'll talk about that dosing versus placebo over 10 minutes plus placebo over 24 hours. Now, this was a pretty sick group of GI bleeding patients. This wasn't all comers. This included things like hypotension, tachycardia, signs of shock, requiring transfusion, needing urgent or emergent endoscopy. So this is a pretty sick group of gastrointestinal hemorrhage patients. Their primary outcome was death due to bleeding at five days, which I think is a reasonable and objective primary outcome. A little bit about the patients, so 89% of them were upper GI bleeds, which is pretty consistent with my general practice. 55% of them had varices, and only 9% were on anticoagulation. So if we look at the primary outcome, five-day mortality due to bleeding, there was no difference between groups. It was 4% versus 4%. Now, they also had all these pre-specified groups that they looked at because it was such a large trial. They looked at giving the tranexamic acid in either less than three hours versus greater than three hours, the location of the bleed, whether this was variceal um, or non-variceal bleed, and then distributing people amongst a rock all score in terms of severity of their bleeding. And they still found no difference in any of these subgroups. There was no signal anywhere. So ultimately a negative study. Now their secondary results, which was death due to bleeding or re-bleeding, occurred, they looked at one day, five days, and 28 days. And even amongst all their secondary outcomes, which are generally hypothesis generating, there was still no difference. So negative, negative, negative study, no difference, no benefit with tranexamic acid in upper gastrointestinal hemorrhage. Now there were some adverse events. There was more DVTs and PE, so thromboembolism, and there was more seizures. And when we crunched the numbers for number needed to harm, it was 250 patients for every 250 that get the tranexamic acid, one person could have a DVT or PE. And for every 500 patients that get the tranexamic acid, one person can have seizures. Now, a few discussion points that I think are worth diving into a little bit. So when we look at giving tranexamic acid early, which is what a lot of the trauma literature tells us, and we look at what percentage of these patients actually fell in the less than or equal to three hour window, it was only 16% of the patients. So a lot of people said, well, no wonder it was a negative study because most of these patients had their bleeding going on for more than three hours. Here's the problem. In trauma patients, we have about a known time of when the trauma happened and so therefore when the bleeding started. With gastrointestinal hemorrhage, it's unclear. Does the time of bleeding count as the time that you actually see the bleeding? Or has there been bleeding that's been going on? And I've had this happen in the hospital where patients will start to drop their hemoglobin, we don't have any signs of GI bleed, and then 24 hours later, we finally figure out our source of the bleed. And so it's a different disease process in terms of being able to time these patients. And even the less than three hours, how do you really know that it was less than three hours? In terms of the dosing in trauma patients, I think a lot of places have now changed to two grams over eight hours. Um, a lot of people used to give one gram. Now a lot of agencies are switching over to two grams in trauma patients. For our GI bleed patients, they gave four grams over 24 hours. And I really like their reasoning for why they chose this dosing strategy. 
and it's simple. We know that the half-life of tranexamic acid is about two hours, and we know that the highest risk of re-bleeding for GI bleed patients is in the first 24 hours. So they wanted to make sure that they covered the entire 24 hours and they covered the half-life of the tranexamic acid. So the bottom line from the HALTED trial is definitively no benefit, at least in this group of patients that they studied. There are potential for increased harms. As far as the patients, it's really hard to know what the exact timing of gastrointestinal hemorrhage is. I have a QR code here for you. If you want to go to the podcast or the blog post on this topic, just hold your phones up and you can go straight to the post or you can search on Google and put in halt it TXA for GI bleed and rebel EM and it will take you to the top hit, which will be a little bit deeper dive. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. Please leave me your comments and questions and thanks for tuning in.